Why can I, how can I follow somebody who can't set a standard for me? I, I'm already in enough trouble. I need somebody to look up to. Praise the Lord. And this is why, uh, the, hear me preachers, quality of character is very important. Matter of fact, let's turn to this. Let me see if I finish everything I want here. Uh, what, what was that, Donna? Where's the... Read verse 35. The son man will say, power the dead raised up, and with what body they suffer. Read. All right. Fool, that which thou soweth is not quickened except it die. This is why I've said you've got to be buried with him in baptism. Now you see how important it is, uh, and you go to church right now, and they tell you baptism have nothing to do with salvation. It does have everything to do with salvation because you kill the Adamic you by being buried with Christ in baptism and Christ set the example himself in Matthew 3rd chapter when he went to John the Baptist and John the Baptist said, I have no need to baptize you. I know who you are. You're the Lamb of God. But Jesus said, suffer it to be. Thus it is to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus set the example. And if Jesus, the God of glory, had to be baptized, you mean to tell me you're going to let a preacher tell you you don't need to be baptized? Glory, hallelujah. But I tell you, weak people, weak people, because they love a lie, they cherish a lie. And this is why you find them at the casinos on the weekend and in the bars on the weekend and Sunday right in the church. Turn to, uh, wait a minute, where was that at? Read the next verse, darling. Uh huh. Every seed his own body. Now here God is talking about a transformation. Now watch verse uh, verse uh, thirty nine. Did did I I share with y'all about over that radio cast a couple of weeks ago? This this person called in. <laughs> And they said, I just lost my dog. Would, would y'all pray for my, for, for my dog? It's true. Maybe some of y'all heard it. And the woman said, all right. Uh, 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 and she said, we're going to pray. You lost a, a member of your family. We're going to pray. And, 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 and she didn't even know. And I heard the laughing when the woman called in. I, 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 you know, it, it was a mockery, really. And uh, the person didn't catch it because they don't have the Holy Ghost. And, and, and prayed for the dog. How, how many of you know that? A dog does not have a soul. When a dog dies, I don't care how much you love your dog. Amen. I love dogs. I don't love cats, but I love dogs. I wouldn't let my kids have one because they wouldn't clean up behind them, and I ain't going to clean up behind them. <laughs> Amen. I'm not going to be walking on the backyard stepping in this, that, and other. Amen. Now, if you, now, I have nothing against dogs, but here's what I want you to understand. When a dog dies, that's the end of it. He's gone. Case closed. A dog does not have a soul. Dogs don't go to heaven. Horses don't go to heaven. Cats don't go to heaven. Mankind goes to heaven because that's who God created. And he made the beast of the field to be subservient to mankind. That's why when you tell a dog, come here. And he come. Dog, dog don't tell you to come here. I hope not. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, but I'm showing you that people really... They don't even understand the hierarchy of God. It, yeah, we're going to pray, pray for your dog. My goodness. My goodness. You're making a mockery out of the gospel. I started to hit on, on the radio, but I said, no, I'm, leave them devils alone. Amen. All right, read. There are also celestial bodies. There are celestial bodies. We shared on this about six months ago. Now, let me get to this thing about the Son of God. And I want you all to hold on to me. Most of you won't catch this. And most of you, some of you will, but most of you won't. There's no Son of God in heaven. Now, can't be impossible to be. Now, there are scriptures. Son of, son of man, a son of God on the right hand of majesty. Yes. But you've got to understand, the scripture speaks in a plane where people can understand the avenue of the... Uh, or the information 
or instruction that's trying to be imparted to those who are seeking truth. The Son of God, the Bible says, this seed of David, born of the flesh. The Son of God literally died at Calvary. He can't be in heaven if he died. When Jesus arose and told that Mary and that God said, don't touch me because I haven't ascended up to my father. He was talking about a, a position that he was in that was between the, the transformation of his, of his divinity part. And Mary couldn't touch him. But now when he ascended back on high, he had completed the work of the son of God. Now he is God himself on the throne. Now the son of God, praise the Lord, had to do a work and when that work was completed at Calvary, Jesus hung his head on his shoulder and said, it's finished, it's over. The work of the son of God is complete. Now when he done this, he defeated death. Death has no part to a believer, but death has a full part to someone who does not believe. So we've got to understand the importance of Bible teaching. We teach you so that you can come to a full knowledge, not only who God is, but about your requirements uh, and your uh, commitment to God concerning eternal life. Now when God ascended back on high, he ascended back with a terrestrial body, or rather with a celestial body, not a terrestrial body. And we who die, die in a, ter uh, a terrestrial body, but when the trumpet sounds, it will be a celestial body that's quickened. And the Bible says in twinkling of an eye, this takes place. You snap your finger and my goodness, your body transforms into the celestial state where you live forever and ever, no more sickness, no more death. But people can't seem to understand. Let me show you a good way to understand what I'm saying. Now, the Bible makes mention that God was what? Manifest in the flesh. Or God became the flesh. He became the Son of God. It wasn't somebody else. It was God who became the Son. That's why Jesus had that deep conversation in the 14th chapter of St. John and told Philip, uh, Philip said, show us the Father. And Jesus said, uh, how long have I been with you, Philip? Yet thou have not known me. When you see me, you see the Father. The Father is an invisible spirit. Jesus is the visibility of the invisible spirit. But since you can't touch or see the invisible spirit, you can see his personality or you see Jesus in his uh, bodily form. But it's not two gods, it's still only one God. Now, what was it? Drop down to verse 50. Now, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now, we already opened up that thing that was born of Mary, the seed of David, was born of the flesh. But flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of heaven. So the Son of God can't be in heaven now. God is in heaven now. Amen. All right, now, watch, read. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be changed. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, the dead shall be raised incorruptible. In other words, now this body that you're going to take, it won't get sick. It won't grow old. It'll be the same forever and ever throughout eternity. And you have something to think about. Amen. The, the word says so. In a moment, in twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, when that trumpet sound, boom. Now, it's talking about saved people. It's not talking about the unsaved. So I'm trying to show you in another way that you can prove yourself in the Godhead concerning who Jesus truly is. I want you to take note in Genesis 1 and 1. Whenever you get in trouble, always jump on creation. I don't care who you're debating. They can't handle you. In Genesis 1 and 1, read. In the beginning, who created? Gods. Plural. Is that right? No, it said one God here. In the beginning, God created 